This video is sponsored by Enlisted. Stay tuned until the end of the video to learn how you can support the channel. In real life, a tank is a heavily armored, high artillery vehicle, built for use in large-scale engagements against entire armies. In video games, a tank is a playable character whose main goal is to attract enemy attention, preventing the enemy from progressing toward a victory. These tanks, on their surface, aren't similar in the slightest. However, there's one unifying characteristic that unites all tanks, real or fictional. To bring a skilled tank down, it's going to take an entire army. Tanks have been around in video games for decades, dating back to the various character builds that players would construct in games like Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest. Though the first actual tank character is a difficult thing to concretely define, one of the first popular instances of this archetype was Snorlax from the first generation of Pokemon games. This mod's high defense stat and HP made it an immensely strong damage sponge, and it still sees active use in competitive first generation Pokemon to this day. Why is it so hard to move? Snorlax is the heaviest species of all known Pokemon. This archetype would continue being proliferated throughout gaming, appearing in a wide variety of games, series, and even entire genres. From World of Warcraft to Splatoon, tank characters are everywhere in modern gaming. But why is that? The common nature of the tank class in video games is easily explained by one simple phrase. If the enemy is attacking you, then they aren't attacking the objective. It's the fundamental rule that governs defense in any sort of game. A basketball player can't easily score a goal with someone standing directly in front of them, blocking their vision as well as the ball itself from the basket. They need to find a way around that person in order to win the game. In video games, it's no different. The goal of a tank is to become a wall, the largest and most unbreakable wall you possibly can, forcing the enemy to attack you instead of attacking the objective. This principle is something most players understand, but what makes tank characters truly interesting and diverse is how they become the enemy team's nightmare, the ways in which they are able to prevent their opponents from succeeding. In this respect, there are three methods which every tank uses in order to become the wall that their team needs. Big health, big damage, and big defense. Within these three categories, there's three characters that exemplify what it means to be a tank. First, the Heavy from Team Fortress 2, being incredibly skilled at taking hits and maximizing his survivability. Second, the Gunner from Deep Rock Galactic, specializing in delivering large amounts of damage to any of the many, many threats seen on Hoxus 4. And third, Reinhardt from Overwatch, taking the role of a tank and utilizing it in a much more supportive manner, literally becoming a wall for his team to rally behind. Though these three are the main representatives for their category, they all possess the health, defense, and damage that a tank relies upon to be as much of a threat as possible. And for as effective as they are, for every second the enemy's attention is placed on them, the difficulty of staying alive and maintaining their focus grows more and more. Many who have died in a video game have lamented their health pool, thinking that they may have survived if they had just had 10 more HP to soak up the damage and live just a little bit longer. But when you're a tank, you know that your health means more than just a number. It's a stopwatch tracking how long you can keep a grip of the enemy's attention. The longer that you can stay alive, the more that you have to worry about. And the more health you have, the more problems you have to deal with. This video about tanks is sponsored by Enlisted. Enlisted is a squad-based, free-to-play first-person shooter available on PC and console, combining elements of PvP and PvE combat to make a fresh combination of gameplay elements fit for all audiences. You'll fight in some of World War II's most pivotal battles, leading a squad of AI-controlled comrades into large-scale combat with other players online. The soldiers you have accompanying you will each have specific skills and attributes that you can leverage to your advantage in an effort to lead your squad to victory. Whether you're fighting for the US, Germany, the Soviet Union, or Japan, Enlisted has plenty of weapons and vehicles for you to customize your unit with. In fact, Enlisted has over 400 weapons and vehicles built for intense combat. 
Of course, I'm a huge fan of tank characters, but Enlisted has provided the next best thing. Actual, vehicular, armored, historically accurate tanks, all for use on the battlefield. And now is a prime time to play the game, as Enlisted has received a massive metagame update, complete with research trees, a new matchmaking system, and many other improvements developed in collaboration with the Enlisted community. And on top of all of that, it's completely free to play on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox. Click the link in the pinned comment or video description below to download Enlisted. New PC players will receive a special USA bonus pack containing 4,000 silver and three days of a premium account, as well as several in-game items to give you an edge over other new players. But this bonus is only available for a limited time, so sign up today and play Enlisted. Thank you so much to Enlisted for sponsoring today's video. When operating a real-life tank, it's vital that you're properly armored against enemy fire. Some of the worst tanks throughout military history have failed due to their poor sturdiness. At their core, tank characters are no different. It's incredibly difficult to maintain the focus of the enemy when killing you is as easy as pointing a gun and firing. At that point, you're little more than a gnat on the wall of the battlefield, as opposed to an active threat. In short, a tank needs to be able to keep their health high in order to function adequately as an attention grabber. The higher a tank's health is, the longer he can stand as a threat to the enemy. This trait, when utilized skillfully, forces the enemy to direct their attack toward the tank, and therefore away from the objective. This is an invaluable trait, and something the Heavy from Team Fortress 2 accomplishes quite well. All of you are baby! Heavy is a character that possesses 300 health in his base state, which is enough health to survive anything short of a fully charged sniper headshot or a spy's backstab. The absolute volume of damage Heavy is able to soak up speaks volumes to his sheer bulk, a fact that's compounded when combined with the medic's overheal ability. If a medic heals a Heavy to his full 300 health, the healing will then continue past its base point and cap out at a whopping 450 total health. For this reason, Heavies are a primary target for most medics, allowing Heavy to constantly maintain his big health and dish out as much damage as possible. A heavy medic combo is almost always the center of attention for every player on the battlefield as soon as they make their presence aware to the fight. Almost immediately upon being noticed, the heavy's team will often gather around him, either in an attempt to gain healing from his pocket medic or to further protect the combo from attack. Conversely, the enemy team will also be forced to turn a part of their attention away from furthering the objective to take down the heavy medic combo, which wastes precious time and resources that could be spent defending the point or pushing the payload and the longer the heavy's health can stay high, the more time the enemy has to waste dealing with the new threat. Interestingly, both heavy and medic are notorious for how uncommon they can be in casual play, due to their reputations for being boring or uninteresting. Despite this perception, they are often some of the most widely helpful classes in the game when played well. And even without a medic, heavy has a secondary weapon built to give him sustain in the midst of a firefight, his trusty sandwich. The reason why Heavy's health is so important is that his environment almost always allows him to keep it topped off at max, whether that be from a friendly medic, a nearby health pack, or his trusted sandwich. This item can be eaten by the Heavy in order to replenish up to 300 health over a period of 4 seconds, with a cooldown of 30 seconds before the sandwich can be eaten again. This extra sustain is invaluable in keeping the Heavy's health big. It means that, even when he's been whittled down, when the enemy has the heavy nearly defeated, he always has a way to get him back on his feet before he's inevitably shot down. This is what gives heavy his big health, but the sandwich's secondary ability also gives his teammates a lot of big defense as well. By just clicking the right mouse button, the sandwich can be thrown to teammates to serve as a medium-sized health pack, allowing the heavy to play a more supportive role in helping his team. And of course, his kit wouldn't be complete without his minigun, a deliverer of big damage to anyone hit by its bullets. Attacking a heavy with an already revved up minigun is one of the most lopsided exchanges in all of TF2, assuming you aren't a sniper standing beyond heavy's immediate range. However, as with all tanks, Heavy's biggest weakness is when he overcommits. A Heavy who's been caught without any assistance from his team will almost always die without a single kill to his name. For all the health that a Heavy possesses, all the sustain he can give himself, it won't amount to anything if he throws it away carelessly. 
A heavy, in order to be effective, must put himself in situations where he knows he can handle the attention he's bringing upon himself. If he bites off more bullets than he can chew, then death's appetite won't be satiated by a mere sandwich. When people think of military superiority in the modern day, one of the first five things most people would think of is the tank. This is because of the capability that the tank has as a damage-dealing machine, able to make buildings kneel and armies scatter with a single shot. In video games, the tank's damage-dealing abilities are what many think of when the archetype is discussed, even in places you wouldn't expect. Characters like Bowser in the Mario RPGs are often described as tanks, despite not fitting the technical definition. He isn't a distraction or an attention grabber, but Bowser is, like a military tank, intimidating, imposing, and deals incredibly high damage to anything he confronts. Most people associate tank characters with damage. One of the most effective ways for a player to draw the enemy's attention is to lower their numbers. The more opponents a tank can take out of the game, the higher their threat level grows in the eyes of the enemy team. Eventually, the tank's threat level begins to take a higher priority than the importance of the objective, and that's when the tank has accomplished their goal. But how does this work in situations where the tank's opponents aren't human, but environmental? How do you draw the attention of AI-controlled baddies as opposed to real people? Well, on the mining planet of Hoxus IV, an exhausted, overworked dwarf sweats his energy dry, fighting tirelessly to draw the planet's hostile wildlife away from his team. He knows they don't have much time, but he's going to give his brothers as long as possible, mowing down wave after wave of insects with nothing holding him back. There's no time for second guessing. They've got minerals to extract, eggs to farm, and gold to mine. We're rich! The gunner from Deep Rock Galactic is the epitome of a big damage tank. Even when you look at his appearance and weaponry on the surface, he's equipped with a lead storm powered minigun, a bulldog heavy revolver, and a humongous set of barracuda armor. Out of all of the tank characters being discussed, the gunner is certainly the most tank-like visually, even sporting the classic military camo green on his base armor set. However, when you get into the details of the gunner's design from a gameplay perspective, he's actually very unique compared to most other tanks. Unlike the Heavy, as well as the other tank being discussed in this video, the gunner doesn't possess a massive health pool. In an effort to keep balancing relatively simple, Ghost Ship Games gave all four classes in Deep Rock Galactic the same amount of health. This means that the usual bulk that characterizes these attention grabbers isn't really prevalent in the gunner. However, what he lacks in health, he certainly makes up for in his massive damage output. In the higher difficulties of DRG's frantic mining expeditions, keeping the giant insects of Hoxus IV at bay is a constantly important and relevant task, and often requires an immense amount of focus from the team. The gunner's existence helps circumvent this problem, as its primary role is as the dedicated diversion dwarf. If he can redirect the aggravation of the Glyphids away from his less offensively capable teammates, then they'll have an easier time completing whatever dangerous task Mission Control has set out for them to do. Swarm incoming! Get through it fast, we're in a tight schedule here! This includes dealing damage to single targets as the primary boss buster on his team. In elimination missions, the gunner is often the primary damage dealer and rally point for his team, frequently combining his attacks with the engineer and driller to drain the health of dreadnoughts incredibly quickly. The effectiveness of the gunner in his role as a tank is compounded by the synergy he has with his fellow dwarfs. For instance, if the engineer chooses to place a turret down near the gunner's position, then he'll have help in holding back the waves of glyphids in the form of extra firepower. This synergy goes both ways as well, as the gunner possesses a piece of equipment built entirely for supporting his team. His zipline launcher allows for him to give his teammates a consistent and effective escape route to use in the event that something goes wrong. It also gives the dwarves a way to move quickly while carrying heavy objects, such as the eggs in Egg Hunt or the Aquarks in Point Extraction. The versatility of the zipline launcher is what makes it so vital to the gunner's game plan. Setting up a zipline before the start of an enemy wave allows the gunner's team to quicken their accomplishment of the objective, which means the gunner spends less time under the pressure of protecting his team. That said, when the gunner is forced to stand his ground, he's excellent at providing his team cover to keep them safe when things get too difficult to handle. Using his support tool, the shield generator, the gunner can give a temporary safe zone for the dwarves to retreat to in times of stress. In this regard, 
the gunner not only excels at inflicting big damage, but also can offer his team a significant amount of big defense on top of that. I'm gonna die! Can't breathe! That said, like the heavy before him, the gunner's role lends itself to his most common pitfall. By the nature of the class, there's a near constant balancing act taking place between the gunner attracting the enemy's attention and him overcommitting and being in over his head. The unfortunate reality of the gunner is that, for as much as he can defend his team, he often struggles to defend himself. It's common for him to get so entrenched in the fight that he overcommits to an unwinnable situation and dies protecting his team. As with most tank characters, the pressure of having the opponent's attention isn't easy to operate within. The tank is almost always fighting in the eye of a hurricane, and if there's one misstep, one mistake, one miscalculation, the tank will be swept away in a hail of enemy retaliation. A very important trait of vehicular tanks is their ability to act as a rallying point for an army. Though the huge artillery-firing behemoths are often propped up for their offensive capabilities, tanks are also incredibly proficient in their defensive benefits in large-scale conflicts. In the same way that Remora swim near the bodies of sharks for protection, soldiers will often centralize around tanks to have additional cover. This means that a tank's bulk isn't just helpful to the tank itself, but also to the team that surrounds it. The same is also true for that of tank characters. Though it's often overlooked, a lot of renowned tanks and video games excel in supportive roles. More specifically, tank characters are often proficient in giving boosted defense to their team. However, these supportive capabilities are mere add-ons to the kits of these tanks, whose primary focus is found in other areas. But there is one tank character whose design is almost entirely centered around the protection of his teammates. He doesn't prioritize offensive might or his own health. He focuses on his team and keeping them in the fight. This is... Reinhardt is a playable character from the hero shooter Overwatch, as well as Overwatch 2, the game's underwhelming sequel. He's also the only character presented in this video to be directly referred to as a tank by the game that he's in. Why is that? Well, in Overwatch, there are three types of heroes that can be used in each game. These three categories are damage, support, and of course, tank. Yes, Reinhardt is just one of many tanks presented in Overwatch's hectic selection of heroes. However, in a game where supports can outdamage the damage characters and damage characters excel in support-based roles, it's no surprise that many of these tank characters aren't designed in a way that fits the archetype particularly well. For instance, Roadhog is a hero listed as a tank. Based on his relatively high health and his ability to heal himself, one may assume he's a big health tank who's built to be a bullet sponge for his team. However, in practice, Roadhog is often not the focus of the enemy team's attention for prolonged encounters, often operating much more as a roaming pick class who uses his healing abilities as a get-out-of-jail-free card in tough situations. The point is, Overwatch isn't a game where the label of tank means all that much. However, Reinhardt is the epitome of what a tank should be, operating only to occupy the attention of the enemy and prevent them from progressing toward an objective. He's equipped with a huge hammer that does massive damage to anyone unfortunate enough to be caught in its swing, as well as a projectile that can be fired to finish off enemies or scare them away. Not to mention his charge ability, which can be used to pin enemies to a wall, killing low health targets instantly. On top of that, combining these moves with his ultimate attack can allow Reinhardt to sweep entire teams, as the devastating Earth Shatter knocks enemy heroes down and prevents them from acting for a decent period of time. This solidifies his place as a big damage dealer, but he also possesses a large combined health of 550, with 300 health and 250 armor. This gives him significant effectiveness as a big health tank as well. However, where Reinhardt shines the most is in his role as a defensive wall. Literally. Upon holding down Mouse 2, Reinhardt deploys a shield known as his Barrier Field, which blocks any hit scan or projectiles that make contact with its massive width. The Barrier Field is what allows Reinhardt to give cover to his team, even allowing full defense against most ultimate abilities in the game. Suddenly, like Remora to a shark, players have a place to retreat to when low in health. Not to mention, Reinhardt's shield also can give defended players the time necessary to be fully healed by a nearby support. 
It also offers Reinhardt an immense amount of utility independent from his team, allowing him a chance to escape tactical blunders, such as charging without cover from his team or being flanked by an enemy player. The shield is an incredibly versatile tool, and one that forces the enemy team to respect its position and influence over the battlefield. Whenever the shield is deployed, especially at a choke point, the enemy will always be forced to deal with it immediately, which of course takes their attention away from directly pursuing the objective. You used to be better at this. I will fight to my last breath! <laughs> This effectiveness doesn't come without its drawbacks, however, as Reinhardt is just as vulnerable to his own hubris as any other tank. It's easy for Reinhardt players to feel overly confident due to his immense strength and health, and as a result, neglect his role as a defense provider. This then leads to Reinhardt attempting to rush down the enemy team single-handedly, and often getting harshly punished for it. Though his team often relies on him for defense, he subsequently will rely on his team for assistance and support. A tank can't handle the immense pressure they face on their own, and as a result, they will crumble without the support of their team. Tanks pass their way forward. The men follow closely, protected by this wall of moving steel. Military tanks are often seen as big, hulking monoliths of man-made conquest, a symbol of what it means to be truly dominant over one's domain. Tank characters are no different. Many people who pick Heavy, The Gunner, or Reinhardt for the first time expect for the game to become a cakewalk, a simulation of slaughter where they get to mow down everyone in their path under hails of gunfire. However, in reality, good tanks are often anything but headstrong. Despite their appearances, all of these characters are really fragile when they're truly put in the forefront of a firefight. The attention that they bring upon themselves isn't something that's easily handled. It's something that takes careful preparation, practice, and timing to pull off consistently. And that's not even considering the pressure that's put on them by the team that surrounds them. If a heavy dies during an important push down a choke point, more often than not the team needs to regroup in order to try again. If the gunner falls during an intense wave of glyphids, it will often take a concentrated effort to get him back from the hordes of insects that now surround his corpse. If Reinhardt dies, and there's no one to shield his team in his absence, the team must either retreat or be cut down by the approaching enemy. The tank is under constant agonizing pressure to stay alive on the battlefield. They are the front line. Their entire team looks to them to succeed. Their team is under their protection. If they fail, their team fails. If they lose, it's their fault. The more attention that a tank is under, the more difficult it is to survive. With every bit of attention, with every person depending on them, the difficulty of their job grows and grows. And for most, the difficulty and pressure is just too much to bear. Tanks die over and over again, letting their team down in game after game until finally they just quit. The reason why many people don't enjoy playing tank characters in video games is simple. Stress. It's hard being the person who tanks all the damage and takes all the attention away from the enemy team. Losing as a tank can feel like an endless cycle of punishment because of how little positive feedback there can be, as well as how detrimental your deaths can feel. There may be these little moments where everything clicks, and you can rally your team in such a way that results in a complete steamrolling of the other team. But, often, a tank is just slowly inching his way to the front line, treading water until the opportune moment when he pushes his team just a little bit further. Without a lot of practice, it's hard to recognize when you're making a difference as a tank, and that can be really distressing for the average player. And when you're losing as a tank, it's often difficult to identify what the problem is. Are you committing too much? Too little? Is it your team's fault for not supporting you, or is it your fault for not taking advantage of their support? All these questions flooding a player's head as they just die over and over again. It results in an unfun experience for a lot of people. Being the member of a team who's constantly forced to undergo the most pressure is exhausting. The same applies in real life. Have you ever been in a group project for school or work where one person ends up doing the majority of the work? That person is the group's tank. Since they did the majority of the work, their work is what gets the majority of the scrutiny when it's criticized. It's not easy being the person people focus on the most. Often this pressure is what results in public meltdowns from celebrities or YouTubers retiring from the job they worked so hard to achieve. When you attract the most attention, 
that attention becomes more and more stressful to maintain the longer you're in the spotlight. It's all a game of expectations. The expectations of family, the expectations of teammates, the expectations of your audience. These are all things that different people face in different parts of life. The expectations, fair or not, come often without warning, and managing those expectations isn't something that's easy for the majority of people. At some point, the weight of the pressure that people have put on you is too much for anyone to carry, and you just have to let it go. It's important to recognize when the expectations of life are too much to carry, and to let go of those pressures and stresses that can be deemed unnecessary. Determining how important these pressures are is a crucial part of keeping afloat in the tidal waves of life. And of course, always check your health, mentally and physically, to make sure that you can take on whatever expectation life is offering you at the time. And remember, the more health that you have, the more problems that you can overcome. Thank you for watching. Thank you again to Enlisted for sponsoring today's video, available on PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. Make sure to check it out using my link in the pinned comment and video description. New players on PC will receive a USA bonus pack that includes multiple in-game items, in-game currency, and three days of premium account access. Thank you so much to Enlisted for supporting the channel.